Hello, John. Hello, Valor. So we're going to talk about Irish uh, famous household products that are no longer produced in Ireland. Uh, that's right. As a matter of fact, most of the products that you would have heard t- t- talking about, uh, there was two articles recently in the Irish Times, well, I'm going to say recently, in the past few months, and that we didn't get a chance to talk about. But that, uh, And there's one there. It says, Will owner of Bachelors and Jacobs venture into US after 1.7 billion takeover. Um, now, uh, they're called Valley, uh, they're called uh, v- Valio, V-L-E-O, Valio Foods, from orphan jams and sweet brands to a 1.2 billion a year sales machine. And they were taken over for 1.7 billion. But the fact is that this Valley Foods has the kind of companies that were household names, um, Jacobs, uh, Bachelor's Beans, uh, the guy that uh, uh, that had that found was in uh, had a few hundred workers in Cabra, uh, Lockery, and he think he might have got a doctor, Doctor John Lockery. He died recently there, leaving fifty five million. Uh, so he made money, but uh, uh, it, it's been part of the, the, this group uh, that took over um, a fellow that was in the Aer Lingus, uh, uh, Valley uh, Ch- Chief Executive Officer Samuel, Seamus Kearney, would be all too aware of the European food companies that have lost their shirts chasing deals on the other side of the Atlantic. Now he's going to be the boss, still the boss of the new company. Uh, that has taken over an American company or venture capitalist. Uh, Fruit Field Boys Danone's Irish Biscuits business, WR Jacob for 65 million, giving it brands such as Jacob's Cream Crackers, Fig Rolls, Kimberly McCann. Uh, and all the jobs have gone, of course, from that. And Jacob's Fruit Field hired Seamus Kearney, former Aer Lingus Chief Operations Officer, and part of the trio of managers behind a failed 204 management buyout attempt for the airline as managing director. So he, he went into the uh, being managing director of food companies. Mm-hmm. And uh, so uh, they've been trading on these household names of all the companies that we have in the country. Um, uh, let me see, Shamra, uh, I don't read the argument, Odlums, Odlums, there's, there's a picture of Odlums there when they were, Doing Just hold something it up there new. Uh, and it's okay. Nigel uh, Adlams. It's no, Nigel uh, Nigel Adlam of Adlams, uh, and uh, uh, Oliver Sutherland. I presume something to do with the farmer commissioner, uh, chief commercial officer of Val, Val, Valio Foods. So they were part of Valio Foods. So uh, out of the four thousand employees that they have. 600 are employed in Ireland, where there would have been maybe 8,000 if those companies were still here and trading by the people that had them at the time. Uh, All these jobs have been lost. uh, Jacobs is gone. Um, And and the rest of them, all household names. They're nearly, any company you can nearly think of, there's only one that I know is still produced in Kilmac Thomas, and that's um, uh, the Paris crowd. Flavins. Uh, uh, Flavins, yeah. yeah. It, it's still, but uh, they must be, had been approached and all the rest of it, but I think they're still still independent and run by the Flavin family. I know them, I was in their place, and it's uh, it's great to see that they're still going. I noticed uh, some of the supermarkets are doing own label porridge, and I hope they're being produced by uh, uh, that family in Kilmac Thomas, Flavins. I uh, hope they're not produced somewhere else uh, because they're a lot cheaper than uh, Flavins and um, uh, that's something I'd, I'd love to find out. Now, uh, we did, as mentioned before, uh, that for instance, um, the spa shops that you see around, the laundry shops that you see around, uh, and um, various other, uh, in that particular group, it's uh, run by... Um, amalgamated wholesalers in Dublin and of course uh, it's actually owned by South African a company 
Uh, so um, a lot of the businesses that are operated by independent stores that are brands that they um, have in their stores is actually owned by some foreign company. Uh, so one sort of wonders what amount of companies are actually in the food business still presently owned by by Irish um, uh, people. Uh, I think Kerry Co-op is still owned by shareholders and farmers and all the rest of it. So uh, this is important uh, to sort of um, figure out how many ones that are still in Ireland uh, are actually uh, still, the brand is still here and, and owned by Irish people. So um, I can you can take it that, um, uh, for example, uh, we were talking about it recently, um, Sud Sudacream, which was called... Uh, started by a fellow called Smith in Fibsborough a hundred years ago. That's uh, Fibsborough in Dublin. Yeah. Fibsborough in Dublin and uh, uh, Smith and uh, <coughs> and uh, a, a, a brand, you know, and used by by every family I think in the country uh, for children, babies, and that, and even for adults that might have uh, um, develop a little rash here and there, and it's a great cure. Uh, the su the su su cream. Uh, the Dubliners who didn't bother pronouncing it soothing creams, so soothe cream. So that name stuck to it, and employed in uh, it's produced in Dun in uh, Baldoyle at the moment with a hundred and odd jobs, and and it would be then the, the uh, like the literature and uh, the packaging and all would be I suppose uh, there'd be jobs local for that kind of thing and and all the rest of it and and um, what they produce electricity and what they use in the factory that they're in but they're uh, now being sold and going to be produced in Bulgaria uh, so whatever added on value that they produce with in in Baldoyle and for the Irish economy is going to be lost. And these workers now are going to be another charge in the state. Uh, is more people now paid by the state by way of unemployment benefit and this, that and the other. Uh, aside from all the people that have paid their dues. Uh, like, what, what is the reality of jobs? Uh, there's a lot of jobs in the internet section and the computer section, but these jobs can go anywhere if food companies... Uh, that were producing quality stuff in this country and and started in this country and now are produced all over the blinking EU and the cheapest country you can imagine. It doesn't think seem a good policy. It's, it's, it's rather sad when you see in the Irish media, it's quite common over the last two years, uh, especially with Leo Bradker mentioning it, that um, he's talking about a living wage. In other words, you'll get paid, say, three, four hundred, maybe five hundred to sit at home and do nothing, right? And this is, of course, is in part because probably the jobs aren't there or the one mightn't be there in the future, you know. Um, so uh, it's, it's, we need our manufacturing. Well, you do, because people need to feel needed. Yes. Uh, if you're sort of uh, paid for doing nothing, we know the social ills that arise from that. The people that have not worked cause more trouble then their numbers weren't right. uh, in, in every jurisdiction and not just this one but uh, it's chaotic in Britain with the amount of uh, with the amount of trouble that's caused in that country and likewise we know that in the US uh, when one black man was killed uh, they started um, riots which is still going on and uh, uh, because of the change from uh, one thing and another, uh, it, it is, has, has resulted in a lot of um, uh, violence and people being killed. Uh, so, um, so basically, work keeps people busy, it keeps them focused and it keeps money in their pocket. Well, something like that. But uh, I think also uh, we see in Canada now, uh, whatever uh, sort of mismanagement they've come up with, uh, when children from the what they call the local Indian or whatever population they had in that country uh, now that they're born in Catholic churches that provided uh, sustenance for for thirsty souls and here now they're born in those and it seems to be a despicable country 
Instead of the land of opportunities, it's turned into a nightmare. Apparently it's described as the one country that's what woke, or whatever that means. In other words, it's 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 going astray in many ways, and uh, there's a persecution of the Christian faith and faiths in general being being sidelined uh, with the policies that they're adopting. Uh, very dangerous, and I think they're chancellor in this country as well, interfering with the education of children, with um, with with, uh, with 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 the um, the new version of of of, of what's considered normal. Uh, so uh, children uh, deserve to be treated with respect in their education and taught virtues rather than items that's liable to confuse them and lead them astray. I mean, they have a period when they're way, some ways innocent and as they come through life, uh, they can encounter a lot of difficulties in trying to cope with the various pressures on them uh, from peers and from the establishment, if you like, and it's very hard to walk a good line between all these. So we're living in very strange times, aside from COVID. The COVID business and whatever it is that they're apparently unable to deal with properly, uh, except for to isolate people, uh, it's a dangerous situation uh, for any country to be in and to be going astray in other areas as well. And uh, interfering with the practice of their Christian faith, very dangerous. It's developing the spiritual well-being of society is the important uh, event, and promoting family life is very important. And uh, this is something that's, I think, neglected. That's it. Thanks very much, John. Thanks very much. Yo.